Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula. Beneath the inaccessible jungle is a vast honeycomb of underwater limestone caverns. They call this cave Nahoch Nachich, the giant birdhouse. Nahoch Nachich is the most extensive underwater cave in the world. Divers who enter here do so at their own risk. With no place to surface, no daylight, and no clear way out, cave divers face the ultimate underwater challenge. Cave diving is probably the single most dangerous activity humans can do, period, whether it's above water or underwater. The big fear that I have is getting stuck, hopelessly trapped. Yeah, it's, it's dangerous as hell. I get scared on a regular basis, and when I get scared, I know it's danger. These divers are risking their lives because of a driving ambition to conquer and map the maze of twisting passages and dark tunnels that make up the cave. Buenos amigos! Como estas? The first person to ever descend into the pitch black labyrinth of Nahoch is Mike Madden. The exploration of Nahoch has become an all important part of my life. It's an opportunity like the first people that climbed the highest mountains or people that crossed the, the plains for the very first time or discovered new continents. We're discovering things that have never been seen before. It has taken Madden a decade to chart 40 miles of underwater passages inside the cave. On this expedition, he's hoping to push even further into the gigantic cave system. Madden handpicks his team. For this dive, he's brought together some of the world's best. There's mapmaker Eric Hutchison, the world's only full-time underwater cave cartographer. Data whiz Dan Linz brings computer accuracy to the mapping of the cave. The charting of Nahoj depends on his information. And videographer Wes Skiles, he's shot in all the oceans of the world. The entrance to the cave is at the bottom of one of the many sinkholes called cenotes that dot the Yucatan jungle. Just getting all of their equipment there is a test of endurance. Madden and his team pick their way along five miles of slippery limestone trail. It's the remains of a 2,000-year-old Mayan road. This mud. Bad news. The trek to the cave ends at this remote Mayan ranch. The dive into Nahoch Nachich begins here, at the bottom of the sinkhole. Here, the divers will check and recheck their equipment. There is no room for error. When you make a mistake in an underwater cave, your time to solve problems is measured in breaths, not minutes, not hours. It's breaths. So if you have a problem and you can't solve it, you're going to die. They bring extra tanks of air for dives that can last up to seven hours. Every piece of equipment has at least one backup. Air hoses must be strapped down to prevent entanglement. Wetsuits and hoods guard against hypothermia in the 76 degree Fahrenheit water. Helmets shield the divers from sharp stalactites and falling rock. Customized cave lights will cut through the total darkness. The goal of today's dive is ambitious, to find a passageway between Nahoch and another cave several miles away. Such a link would increase the length of Nahoch dramatically. Finally, the divers are ready to go. Beneath the surface, Nahoch reveals its haunting beauty. 
The diver's lights reveal room after room of stunning rock formations, preserved here in total darkness for 12,000 years. They are from a time when the cave was above water and dry. But the cave's beauty hides a host of dangers. Divers can be blinded by silt, become hopelessly lost, and run out of air before they can find their way out. Survival depends on a thin guideline, an eight-inch thick nylon cord. The plastic triangles point the way back to the entrance. Nahoche is basically a, a huge spider web of lines and, and tunnels and passages running parallel, running at different depths, running in different areas. And so the cave system can be very confusing. And of course, being confused or not knowing the, the correct way out in a cave is usually fatal. Lights are essential. If they fail, the cave is a black abyss. Delicate rock formations can collapse. Even the diver's exhaust bubbles create a hazard. Exhaust bubbles will blast the ceiling and go into a fracture and dislodge certain materials that can come down and create a zero visibility situation where you all of a sudden have crystal clear visibility to nothing for a mile behind you. Poor visibility can slow them down and use up precious air. So every move is coordinated. The divers even have specialized kicks to keep from stirring up the silt. Two hours pass without success. Then suddenly, a promising discovery. A new tunnel. This could be the link to the second cave. They enter the Virgin Passageway and lay a new guideline. Eric Hutchison documents the find. He makes a map of the tunnel using his compass, a dive computer, and sketches. The coolest thing about the Hoach is there's like no end. There's a continual drive to push you to go farther and farther and farther than anybody's ever gone in an underwater cave. But after swimming nearly a half mile, the team's hopes are dashed. The new passage leads nowhere. There's no place to go but back. The divers begin the long, careful swim to the cave's entrance. The five-hour underwater expedition ends in disappointment, but not defeat. <laughs> Outrageous. Over last. OK, Mike, got the last bit of the data that we collected today coming to you. Back at the camp, Madden and Linz enter Hutchison's wow. survey data into a wow. computer. It's a lot closer than I thought, huh? You there? Trending, trending straight north. They decide to try and find the connection between the two caves by going in from the other way. That means starting a dive in the uncharted new cave. 28 tanks, four divers for one dive. This is getting to be an unbelievable amount of air. <laughs> The assault on the new cave begins early the next morning. We're uh, on our way to a system called Nahochha, which means giant water. This is a new entrance that we found has uh, great potential for us, a connection to the south end of Nahoch. Battery-powered underwater scooters pull the divers quickly through the water, conserving their energy and air. Working their way through the unexplored tunnels, Dan Linz lays a new guideline. The divers' lives depend on retracing this slim nylon thread. Eric Hutchison takes the lead as the team forms a train to reduce drag. Now they slip through the water more quickly, stretching their air supply thousands of feet into the cave. Suddenly, it's impossible to see. The waters are blurred by a phenomenon called a halocline. 
A haloclide is created when salt water and fresh water meet. Here, the fresh water rises to the top, while the denser salt water settles to the bottom. The haloclide environment is something really to be dealt with. The water is so blurry from the mixing of the fresh water and the salt water that you virtually can't see. But the explorers press on, pushing their limits and going further into the cave. Out of the darkness, another surprise. Eric Hutchison spots an eerie green light. It's an opening to the surface, a small hole deep in the jungle. The divers stop to plot their next move. Hutchison voices his concerns. That's not a good situation. What with the, uh, with the haloclane like that? The whole yeah. thing, we got too many guys motoring along. If we go a hell of a lot further, it's, it's not gonna be an easy exit. If no, it continues like that, I, I don't, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna go much further. After weighing the risks, the divers decide to push ahead, swimming deeper into the unknown. The cave narrows, and the stalactites grow thicker. Then the tunnel pinches to a close. But as they turn, the haloquine and disturbed sediment create a swirling underwater blizzard, a complete whiteout. Now the guide line is literally a lifeline. One of my biggest fears in cave diving is losing that line in limited visibility or zero visibility. That is the lifeline. If I don't have that line, I have no exit. And that's a fatal mistake. Navigating by touch alone, Wes Skiles fingers the guide line carefully. If he pulls it too hard, it could break. As they grope their way into a larger passage, the water clears. From here, it will still take an hour to swim to the cave entrance. If there are no more setbacks, they should have enough air to make it out. Now the greatest danger comes from within. I've had a time or two in caves where the panic level came up pretty good. Panic in these kind of situations, um, if you don't do something about that pretty quickly, you're done. Got it. You don't think it's a friendly cave? Well, it's not a friendly cave. No, it's, it's a cool cave. It's a wild cave, but it's definitely not a friendly cave. The it's adrenaline the rush happens because that's it. You can't find that line. You're done. It's all over with you here for eternity. If you're not paying attention in here, you die. It, yeah, you die. Because <laughs> this is one of you're going to die. <laughs> you're going to die. What a cave, man. Oh, man. In the end, the dive was still a success. They have proved that the new cave is carving towards Nahochna Cheech. A connection seems likely. This is where it all started, right here at the Nahoch main entrance. Where... The exploration of this amazing underwater system is far from being complete. Who knows how big it's gonna be. It may take a lifetime before Madden and his team determine the extent of the giant cave network. But with each dive, these explorers push the boundaries of this new frontier and shed light on one of the most beautiful and mysterious treasures on the planet.